another problem in my garden. I have rust. Now the thing about rust is a fungal infection that actually goes for canners. And I think we've seen it first in the first episode when we talked about propagation and we talked about rust. Now rust is a powdery substance that if I put my hands on it, is all this spores come out and your finger turns like a reddish brown color and that is what rust is so today what i'd like to do let's talk about it my name is alice uh, i'm the red soil gardener let's try to solve this problem because i'm actually getting quite um, annoyed about the rust As I mentioned earlier, rust is a fungal problem. Now what happens is, is that when they do go for the canna, is it forms little sort of blisters, little tiny blisters, and it actually starts from the back. Because if you look at the back, here are those little spores, all this reddish brown powdery stuff but it starts from the back and then it moves to the front and then what happens is that when it does get really really bad it actually attacks your stem so when it does get bad this is when you have to really think is that maybe get rid of that plant and not hold on to it now the condition that is prime for fungus is usually when you have a rainy season, which we've had, and especially is that when you have full foliage and you get a lot of moisture, humidity and moisture, and this is where they, these uh, fungus <laughs> thrive in. So when you do get those conditions, just look out for the fungus spore on your plant. Now, you see what happens, that's why the fungal infection is actually really devastating and I'm actually quite angry with myself because I knew I had a problem but I just cut, you know, just removed the foliage but I didn't realize because our rains has been haphazard and we do get that sun coming in and you get that humidity. I never realized that it was going to be so bad. But what these fungus do, the spores, is they settle at the back of the plant and once they settle it at the back of the plant you don't notice them until you get this sort of infection when it moves to the surface. Now what it does is that at the back of the plant you get stomatas which are cells that actually are there which the, helps the plant take in air and water and as it, well it's like a breathing little mechanism for the plant. Now this is where this spore actually enters and it goes for the plant tissue. So it enters the stomata and starts actually nourishing itself from the plant. So once you get that infection which is actually in the plant tissue, what happens is, is the more infected it gets, it starts breaking up like this. And in the end, the leaf is more or less finished. And also with this infestation, it doesn't help the photosynthesis of the plant because it's the leaf has got infected. And so in the end is you will lose your canna lily and we don't want that. So now, even as we saw it, that the fungal infection went onto the stem, it can actually even filter down to the rhizon. And then what it does, it affects also your, your flowers. Now, this is a canna flower from my fungal co collection of canna lilies, which I'm going to cut down. But even if you look at the seed production, there's hardly anything there because it's actually what is done. It's completely disseminated our plant and there's no seeds, no canna seeds left in there. So with the fungal infection, be careful because you could lose your canna stock. Now, because uh, we've seen the, the dissemination of my canna leaves, is there are simple things you could start off by doing. Now, one thing is reduce the foliage 
underneath your canna lilies because basically as it rains and you get the rain in the soil and you get a lot of foliage in the soil if you don't get that air circulation the air is still and that is a good breeding ground for the fungus second thing is when you do water your plants make sure that you don't water the canna lily leaf because basically is that with the canna lily leaf if it remains wet for a long time that is another breeding ground for our canna rust the other thing you can do is we know that canna lily love full sun do put them out in the sun don't put it under shade again because of the moisture in the soil and also as you plant your canna lilies just make sure you do keep a distance in a way that you're not compacting all the canna lilies together and do go in there and do cut the foliage so in the end whatever even as your cannas are maturing just remove some of those foliage to let the new shoots go up but avoiding for it to be overcrowded so basically what I did is because I my, my situation was actually quite critical because this is where I have my canna lilies and also I have my talanthias and some of my talanthias were getting rust so what I did go out and do is I went and bought a fungicide that is specifically for canna rust now the problem is is that when you do use a fungicide is um, well, it's not actually a problem is that you have to note is that if you do use that fungicide and you keep repeating the application all the time, you can get a fungal resistance towards that pesticide. So what my advice to you is once you do get a pesticide, let's say for rust, use it several, maybe two, three times over a few months and then change that application to another type of fungicide so in that way you don't get your fungicide being fungal resistant. The other thing is that you can use neem oil. I always do believe in neem oil, but the thing is, is that with neem oil, you have to do several applications. So I would do it every two or three weeks and then repeat it again. But it also works, especially in situations that it is not so severe, like the attack I got in my garden. Now the other thing, what you do, if it's so extreme, as we, you could see today, that's what I've been doing, is I'm chopping a lot of the things out. I've cut down some of my talanthias that were severely infected. I've cut down some of my canners that were severely infected. And what I'm going to do is chop it up and actually not put it in the compost because I don't want this thing to spread is I'll have it there and just dip it in some sort of sterilizing solution or just to get rid of those spores and then I'll take it out for the refuse collectors because I don't want it around the compound because it does spread very quickly. So fellow gardeners, thank you so much again for following our channels. We're all canna lovers. I know that we all love them and we don't want them to be destroyed by fungus or by pests or our little leaf roller. But at the same time is uh, do take precautions early because especially even if you do see the rust is that it's been breeding there for a long time. So as you go around the garden, just flip your um, flip your leaves over because that's where the infestation starts and don't forget to like and share and press that notification button and subscribe to our channel let so many people all your friends family uh, tell them about the red soil gardener and do follow us on instagram and we do do a lot of posting and do write to me i always answer i love it when i receive your comments thank you so much and have a lovely day and get rid of those <laughs> the fungus side. We don't want any spores in our garden. Thank you so much and have a lovely day.